Hey guys, I'm Gaspachian. The previous video on synchronous Minmus orbits got loads of replies and suggestions on Reddit. I'll deal with three of these suggestions in order of difficulty. Wolfsdale said, wow, really cool, you actually did it. Now, if you add wheels, maybe the game will let you collect ground samples as you technically touch down. Crab HD, however, replied, the EV-8 Kerbal would still count as flying and the wheels rolling resistance will degrade the orbit. We'll see which one is the victor, the optimist or the realist. So to solve that challenge we of course had to design another ship because the station I used to demonstrate things with uh, didn't have wheels. But this one does and a crooked command share uh, which isn't such a big problem. We have a science runner here that we will run. It's not going to give us any interesting output or anything. So we're going to come in here for a skimming landing. And there are two things to note here. First of all, that we're going to be able to collect the surface samples because we're in the chair here. And also look at our Apple and Perry how much they change, which is barely anything. So you're actually kind of in a stable orbit even though you do this little suborbital bounce. And if you try to land on something that's not perfectly flat, well then your orbit will get deflected quite a bit. Although you may still be safe to do some minor adjustments out at your app apps for very little delta v. Now in the previous video I only really showed off one orbit which is kind of a shame because there are multiple synchronous orbits you can set up and uh, we went for the most boring one which was a prograde equatorial orbit. Now this is also an equatorial orbit you would say but this time we're going retrograde because, because why not again with a retrograde orbit instead of subtracting the planets rotation from your from your orbital speed to obtain your surface speed here you will instead add the rotation so we're going to come in for a faster flyby here you can see our orbital speed is 229 meters per second and climbing but our surface speed is about 10 meters per second higher so it's not a huge difference but this time we will be traveling about 10 percent faster across the surface And yeah, we can do these very tight passes by now that we sort of know how this works. And that was very much a stretch out your hand and grab a scoop of ice cream distance at 243 meters per second. So there wouldn't be much left of your hand, I, I have to admit. There is a gap going nearly north to south, which is very hard to align with, but it is there. And this is me coming in against that gap. And this leaves very little room for margin. In fact, I think we are on a crash course right now. The equatorial orbit is bad enough. This one is very sensitive to random fluctuations, because as long as you're equatorial, you will still fluctuate in your orbital plane relative to the surface. As long as, as, as soon as you add any sort of inclination, any deviations to our orbital period will shift our approach here uh, east to west, depending on if it's an increase or a decrease in, in orbital periods. And you can see we're coming in here between the hills so if our orbit was shifted slightly to the west or the east here, we would be crashing. At several points during this approach, we get within 100 meters of the surface, which it will turn out is actually still a bit too much to get this working. After you have reached your peri and done the flyby over there, way above the 
beyond the horizon. You're also going to need to come in and squeeze in between these two hills. And these two hills are much lower, but they're very much closer to your periaps as well if you don't adjust properly. So, um, indeed, we would have wanted to be way lower on our first approach there to avoid hitting this hill. And I, I have gotten through here once, but uh, setting that up properly and at the same time avoiding altering your orbit so much that you crash on, on those hills over there next time is still sort of beyond me. I think this is the only pass you could really make at a very inclined orbit uh, with a descending node above these flats. I mean, with an ascending node, you could you could head off into this direction and come in from that direction, no problem. But there is a reason uh, I have been investigating th this case in particular. The reason we're investigating this case is pickled tripod with the stipulation, I wonder if there are two perfectly opposed spots, both in flats biome, that could be used to achieve that with a semi-synchronous orbit. That would be amazing. Indeed it would. Let us see if we can find any such locations. The thing here with the flats is that they are spread out across the planet, mostly equatorial, which is nice for us. Because if we were to go and select a color, like so, now we can see where the flats are. All the black areas are flats. The interesting thing we want to consider is the case of a semi-synchronous orbit. We'll duplicate this layer. We'll switch that to multiply mode, which will allow us to see the layer as well as the layer beneath it. And then we're going to shift the layer 1024 to the left. Invert the values of both. Invert. There we go. This way we have highlighted all the areas where there are flats on the opposing sides of the planet. The uh, flats we have been using are these flats where we have been coming in equatorially from here and leaving over here with our peri about here. And uh, as fortune has it, on the opposite side of the planet, there are flats at that position as well, offset slightly to, to the north. And uh, in theory, there could be some approach here where you have a half synchronous orbit and you're able to hit both of these flats in one go, or rather, each of this, these flats every other go. But we shall see, there are some issues with this. So we see that for a half synchronous orbit, which would have half the orbital period, of course, we're looking at slightly different values for our apps. Uh, we're looking at a semi-major axis target of 263 kilometers rather than the 416 we have right now. And that should be easy to correct once we're down to our periaps. It's a simple matter of burning retrograde. So, we're now in theory in a half synchronous orbit. And this is an equatorial prograde half synchronous orbit with a periaps of 3 meters. But as we shall come to find out in one orbit, there is a small issue with this. And then, on the other side, we approach our periaps and it does indeed seem to be above those aforementioned flats. But the problem isn't the flats themselves, but rather the mountain that sits right next to them. And uh, with this current approach, well, I think the, uh, the outcome is kind of obvious. 
So the idea behind the 52 degree inclined orbit that I demonstrated earlier and why I sort of want that to work is that I imagine that just looking by just by looking at the map here there seems to be a inclined approach here where you avoid the uh, troublesome mountain here to the west and if we could come in inclined here we can make a pass here and then in half a minimus day we would be off at the flats over here and you do this flyby of these flats as I tried to demonstrate earlier. Of course, if you're in a half synchronous orbit, you're going to come in even even shallower because uh, your orbit sort of curves more with the planet due to gravity than a faster synchronous orbit does. So uh, I'm not sure that this is possible but it looks to be very close and I think it, with some precision it could possibly be pulled off. Finally, the faithful Dayfox3050 came up with this seemingly impossible suggestion. Now make a rover to match its speed on the surface with a docking port on the roof and attempt to catch the station. Should we believe Fakin when he says wh what he says, just because it's true? Or do we apply rocket science to write our own laws?